I'm Lauren Delisa Coleman, and you are inside another episode of the Filmio interview series with a variety of different filmmakers and producers. And I have somebody with me now who I'm really excited to have share with you um, her about her latest film. And so I'm wondering if you could just introduce yourself and give us the name of the film. Hi, I'm Nicole Rodenberg, and I'm the director of Glob Lessons. <music> Glob Lessons is the story of Alan and Jesse, who are two wayward 30-something strangers who have been paired together to do a two-person, low-budget traveling children's theater tour out of a minivan across the rural upper Midwest. And it's about their struggles to overcome their fears of intimacy and the friendship that eventually ensues. And um, out of that, the sort of comes their ability to like write a new story for themselves of their life. Nice. Um, so tell me how this project either, you know, kind of came to you or you came to it. I'm, you know, looking at a lot of, there were many notes on this, which was great, but I wasn't quite sure how everything kind of came, you know, to be. So could you give us a little bit of insight on the, the project and how it just kind of evolved? Yeah, um, well, I co-wrote it with my collaborator, Colin Frober. And we started writing it back in 2013. He did a two-person children's theater tour out of a minivan, very much like the one uh, our characters are doing, mm -hmm. up and down the East Coast in 2012. And I just should stay, say for the record that the company he was with was really great, even though the company, <laughs> our the characters, is, is yeah, a little, it's a little fallen apart. Yeah. But, Wait, he would call me from the road. We're, we're best friends, and we've known each other since seventh grade, and we started writing together in high school. So we're always, you know, right. kind of percolating for things that we think are exciting or interesting. And he would call me from the road and tell me stories, and they would make me laugh so hard. And eventually we realized it was a really, it would be a really wonderful vehicle, no pun intended, right. for a character study. Interesting. So um, he was doing this back in 2013. 2012, did, yeah, 2012. Yeah. But when did you actually start working on, on this project? Uh, when he, he moved to New York after that, and so we were reunited, and we started writing it in 2013. So and you then, did start then. Yeah, and we so were... this has been really quite a, a journey. time it's in the making. A journey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when we started writing it... Um, like I'm, I'm a professional actor, like by trade, but I work mostly in theater in New York, and I had maybe been on one short film set as an actor mm -hmm. at that point, and Colin had never been on a film set, and so the space between us writing the film and gathering the skills and resources to be able to make it, you know, that took a really long time, right? Because uh, we had no idea where to begin. So that was like an enormous part of the journey. So interesting. So then how did you do that? Because of course, some of you know the filmmakers watching this would probably be in that very same, mm -hmm. same space, right? So how did you kind of start that journey and be able to create or bring together an effective team? Well, I took a class in indi like low budget independent film production at the School of Visual Arts in New York City. Um, it was like a continuing education mm -hmm. class. And that was my first exposure to sort of the ins and outs, the actual step-by-step -step process of producing something and the paperwork and what pieces need to be in place where. And, you know, I had no idea what any of that stuff was. So that gave us a little bit of a framework, how to make a budget, how to break down a script. Um, and then after that, I... Uh, was starring in a play called The Flick in New York, and a director saw it and reached out to me and um, offered me the lead in his feature. And his name is Dean Peterson, and he ended up being a real advocate for mm -hmm. us. He read our script, and he thought we definitely had to make it. You know, from there, like playing a lead in it in this film, I met more and more people. I was able to like hand the script over, ask questions, but really, um, you know, it was Dean's support, and he's someone who's always just 
you know, made films on his own, financed them himself, and he really just encouraged us. And, um, you know, it was just really about gathering the confidence more than anything, really? right? It's in, I initially didn't expect to direct it um, because I didn't have confidence that I, I could do something like that. And, but Dean really encouraged me because he had worked with me as an actor. He knew as an actor, I had a really strong like directorial sense. I understand the ins and outs of how scenes work. I can fix problems on the fly. Um, and he said, no one would know the story better or how to tell it better than Colin and I. So I ended up taking those reins and, you know, we, we spent a lot of time. I think we went back to North Dakota. Um, I don't know for like, probably a total of like eight weeks over the course of a summer back and forth doing location scouting and reconnecting with people in our hometown community because we knew we were making this film for such little money that it would be necessary for us to, you know, really call upon the people in our lives who supported us thus far. And thankfully, um, you know, we, lo we know many wonderful people, but it was really, it was true, just like grit. It was wow. just grit. It wasn't money. We made the film with, you know, in addition to Colin and I, our crew was just four other people. So, and Dean was our cinematographer, which was great. It was just a scrappy, scrappy thing. 40 locations, 16 days, like all across North Dakota in the winter. Um, it was wild. So you really wanted to bring this, you know, to life. How do you um, kind of maintain that that passion that's needed, and especially, like you said, kind of learning something really that you didn't expect to kind of um, learn initially. How do you maintain that that kind of passion, Nicole? <sighs> I mean, was there ever any at any point where you said, you know what, it's a cute idea, but you know what, this is too much work. Like, how do you kind of keep yourself going? Huh, I think more than anything, if you're going to embark on this, at least for me, I think this is the thing that kept me going, was the characters of Alan and Jesse, we had worked so hard on them. They were so real to us. We had invested so much of our heart into them mm -hmm. that it, it felt like we'd be betraying them by not bringing their story to life. And... The, and I know that's, listen, we're not, we're not making like a documentary about, you know, things that are really important in the world. It's a, it's a comedy film, but we really cared about these two people. And also, I think it ended up just being one of those things that we knew if we didn't do it, we'd regret it mm. for the rest of our lives. And that's... That's the other thing. And I think a piece of advice Dean had given me was, you know, you just you just put it, just keep putting one foot in front of the other. You know, you put the money down on this and you put this and then eventually you're just so far in you can't turn back. And that's also true. Mm -hmm. But I just I really loved I really loved these two people. That's so, so great. Yeah. And Another part of it was that we also didn't want to just be coming back into our community and just shooting a movie. We wanted to bring the community into it and we especially wanted to bring the kids into it because, you know, making films was, like Colin and I would make little films on his DV camera like back in the day, like pre-high speed internet, but we had no idea how to um, follow that path. and. We, you know, we're just, we're pretty isolated from anything. And so we like created young filmmakers workshops to go alongside our production so that there was really a sense of us wanting to give as, as well as get. And I think, you know, especially for North Dakotans, um, we really want to support each other. There's not mm -hmm. that many of us, right? Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. finding the community of people that, we are going to be the people who want your movie or want to see you succeed is really important. Um, and then just being, you know, very upfront, very detailed about how our production is going to work and also just, yeah, really planning it. Yeah, you have to or else yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah. This was a real no, it was labor of, of love. Truly like labor of love, of love is in the, in the dictionary. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is like right next <laughs> totally, to it, right? Totally, totally. But it all has such a happy ending because then 
you're selected for Tribeca Film Festival, right? Did you see that coming? No, not at all. And, you know, this is a particularly wild thing that I don't think I've clarified to people mm. how wild it is that we're here because we don't actually know how we got on Tribeca's radar. And we're two nobodies, like just nobodies, who made a film for very little money with a tiny crew. And the only thing we had ever done with it was last October, we had submitted a very rough cut to both slam dance and sun dance just to sort of get a kick in the pants. Because the other thing is I taught myself to edit making this film. I had never edited. And editing is so hard. Like, it's I crazy. I don't want to do iMovie on my Mac. Like, <laughs> a 30 second thing. Like, no. No, I love it. But, you know, it. It's when you don't have the skills and you just have intuition, it takes a very long time to just keep trying things until you figure it out. And so we had submitted to these festivals just to kind of get us a kick in the pants to mm -hmm. edit these, mm -hmm. um, you know, sequences that were very scary. And then a few weeks later, we got an email from Tribeca asking us to submit. So I don't know, like, I don't know if we like got passed along some pipeline or what happened or maybe. I have no idea. Wow. So we didn't. So maybe just all really like you know not to be so new agey, but all the good energy that you put out there. Because I you know I did want to before we finish up, I wanted you to address if you could the the young filmmakers mm -hmm. labs that mm -hmm. you created, just oh on the side you know while you're working on creating this feature length like project. So I know you said that you did that as part of you know kind of the Kickstarter scenario or as you were working like why not. But how did you actually decide to be able to um, really take that route? And then you had to actually make good on it, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to, if you say, oh, let's teach these young filmmakers, then you actually have to do it, mm -hmm. right? So how did you set aside the time for that and decide what the, like, kind of little mini curriculum would be? You know, it's kind of a lot, right? While you're still keeping an eye on this film. Right. It was total madness and, like, incredibly rewarding, but absolute madness. Um... But Part of the kids were super into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they were amazing. And a, a big part of it is there's just a ton of kids in our film. You know, we're performing for mm -hmm, children. Mm -hmm. And it's not like there's, you know, um, central casting in North Dakota, right? right? So we knew we needed to get kids. Also, being on a set is boring. So kids aren't going to want to just sit there and pretend to watch something for eight hours and react. So we knew we had to if parents were going to like turn their children over to us, right. we needed to give the children something. And so we ran the, we ran it at the same time as while we were shooting. So we built a curriculum with really the basics and our friend Greg Carlson, who's, um, you know, the professor of film studies at, uh, at one of the colleges in North Dakota helped run it for us. And so the kids would, you know, take, learn about this specific thing. And then a certain group of them would go and, you know, do a scene with us. And then we'd swap them out. And by the end of the day, they had like written their own little scripts and made like their own little films and tried on, you know, practice doing sound and the camera and so, directing. So great. So this had so many different parts to it that nobody would see you know, just watching this film, like all of this, like backstory, right? right? right. So it's a lot of rich um, kind of just experience and support that you've both received and given, right? So it really must be quite rewarding when something like that is like, okay, we're putting that to bed and you're having your cocktail party, like, you know, later on today for that with everybody to celebrate is really like, congratulations, because that's not, it's not easy. No, it's, it's just listening to you reminds me of different things that I've done. Like, <laughs> you're oh just, my god, you're like, uh, yeah. No, you have to be a crazy type A personality to be like, I am gonna get this done no matter what. Yeah, and it can be very, very challenging. But I think for those who are listening, both fans of film and filmmakers, it's great to be able to hear. Like, this was really hard. It, like, comes down to figuring out ornaments, <laughs> you know, to right. give away. Don't, right. like, maybe give up. You have to just be very creative, not only for the project, but everything around the right. project, right? Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Crazy. And I think the thing is, ultimately, it is, it is possible, right? To make, it's possible to make something, and you just need to find the resources at your disposal. And I think, um, 
especially if you're working in a back and forth way, those things become more and more readily available to you. You want to give as well as take. I can't think of a better like note to end on. Nicole, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. This was like really great to be able to hear, you know, I think really about the the internal like the guts of the film really that that part um, I think was just like invaluable right so thank you so much thank you so much everybody thanks for watching and don't miss the next episode Filmio interviews the inside series.